nobody would have imagined such a crime. We have such an event, such a cloud to point at, a cloud of fire, and nothing happened to the world? They haven't learned anything? I don't want the past to become anyone's future. You really couldn't imagine doing the things that they did to the Jews without hating them. You couldn't imagine taking them out of their homes, sending them to concentration camps and to ghettos. We are in the midst of a transition to a world without eyewitnesses. And we are losing our survivors, our very best teachers. We are gonna have ever greater challenges to bring this history to younger generations who will have had no exposure to Holocaust survivors and will have had much more exposure to hate and denial on the internet. Everything that the Nazis tried to destroy, we are trying to save. This is the diary of Otto Wolf. He was just 15 when the Holocaust began for him. And he tells the story of his escape into the Czech forests, where he hid with his family for three years. How is it that he survived those three years? Because people were hiding him from town to town. He even has one entry here where he says, how can I continue to be so lucky? Just weeks before liberation, young Otto Wolf was captured by the Gestapo and murdered in April 1945. This is how we tell the history of the Holocaust, not as a single monolithic event, but as the story of six million individual murders one by one. We're in a race against time to collect objects like this diary and to preserve them. When the survivors and all the eyewitnesses are gone, this evidence will be the sole authentic witness to the Holocaust. Our effort to rescue this evidence is so enormous that we just simply cannot do it alone. For me, the partnership with Holocaust Museum of Washington is providential. Father Dubois is a perfect example of the importance of partnership. In Ukraine, in Belarus, in Russia, they are living above hundreds and hundreds of mass graves, of gypsies, of Jews buried like animals, killed like animals. Our documents can help him identify these sites of killing. And as he goes to these sites, he's able to get testimonies from people who witnessed the massacres of Jews in the East. In one village of Belarus, they asked the Jews to come out of the ghetto and to dance. And all the Belarusian village was here to watch. At the end of this show, the Germans say, now the dance is finished. We go to the shooting and everybody is invited. <laughs> We are capturing this critically important eyewitness testimony that is really going to change the way we understand the Holocaust in the 21st century. But if we don't make these materials accessible to the public, we've lost the power of these artifacts to teach and inspire. Every agent goes through the Holocaust Museum before they become a new agent to, to understand what can happen to a police power that becomes unreined and too powerful. The need for this institution in a very troubled world is more urgent than ever. It not only studies the history of the Holocaust in all its dimensions. Okay, so let's talk about some of the choices that you saw. You but it then takes that history and uses it to engage today's generation and generations to come in the world that they live in. What else are you seeing about the potential for choice? My experience having my own kids come here and watching other kids come here is that you come here and you leave and you're profoundly transformed. 
Part of our challenge looking forward is now that we have technology to be a virtual museum and to reach out around the globe is how do we replicate that very emotional experience for people who never set foot in the museum. Just come up here and speak toward the screen. That is an enormous challenge, but an enormous opportunity. When we say never again, what does it mean never again? It happened, but it could have been prevented. All of those of us who are not part of the survivor generation feel an enormous responsibility, a moral responsibility, and an educational responsibility to pass on the story of the Holocaust. Our goal is the permanence of Holocaust memory and relevance, and we'll never be able to achieve that within our walls in Washington. What we have the chance to build now is not something you can walk into. It's not something you can see. But if we do it right, it is something that will help change the world. Some students ask me, what will happen when all the survivors will be gone? The teacher in me says to my student, just think, perhaps you are the only hope I have. Fulfill it.